Hand Stitches Show. It's Fair Isle Friday for September and we are back to making a fully connected image. So this is one of those images that is fully connected all the way across and it kind of connects the left and the right side of our blanket. And this month we're making a really nifty chain link pattern. If you're really enjoying this year's Fair Isle style graphs and patterns, then we have a special one for you for this September. We've designed a really cute little acorn. <laughs> I love this. This fills my heart with glee. So if you're interested in our acorn pattern, you'll find it for sale in our Etsy shop. It is one of our Fair Isle style plus patterns that we've been putting out this year. We've had a couple about every month or so. We've had a little, a couple of extra ones to go along with the regular Fair Isle blanket tutorials that we've been doing. And um, this is one of September's. It's now available in our Etsy shop. If you want to pop over and check it out, we'll put the link to our shop in the description box down below. Like previous months where we've used a connecting pattern all the way across our blankets, you don't need to use the spools. So we can take a break from the spools this month. You can basically just carry one color all the way across. It's fully mirror image left, right, top, down, and I will still tell you whether you are left or right handed, what side of the graph you should be looking at. And that's all you really need to know. So let's grab our blankets. We'll grab our hooks, we'll grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up the September Fair Isle style chain link pattern together. For our September chain link Fair Isle style pattern, we are going to use the same hook and the same yarn we've been using all along. I'm using a size 4 medium weight, 100% acrylic yarn. You want around 120 yards, maybe 125 yards of your color A, and around 50 yards of color B. You do not need spools this month. You can use them if you like, but this is one of those connecting patterns, so it's actually a lot easier to just carry the yarn all the way through the blanket. You want a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook, also known as an I or a 9. It's the same hook I've been using all along. You're going to want your blankets too, and once you've got all that together, we can get started. As usual, I highly recommend making a sampler of the pattern today before you launch into the full blanket. Making a sampler lets you get comfortable with when we change colors, maybe how we change colors, carrying the yarn itself, and if you haven't quite settled on colors that you're going to use, it lets you work with a small palette in a relatively small space. You do not need spools for this month. Um, however, if you were going to make the inside of your chain link a different color, you might find using a spool would be handy for that, in which case you'd need a spool for each full repeat of the graph. But that's only if you're gonna change um, colors to a color C on the inside of your chain link pattern. If you are going to make the inside of your chain link a different color, you might want to use around 10 yards per spool that accounts for the inside of both these chain links. And again, that's per repeat of the pattern. This is the graph that we will be using for today's tutorial. We'll also have a small version of it sitting up here in the top right hand corner throughout the pattern so that you can pause the video at any time and just double check where we are on the graph. This is also a perfect mirror image, left, right, top, bottom, design. So there is no specific right or left-handed instructions for this month's pattern, but I still will be telling you which side of the graph you start on, uh, whether you're right or left-handed, just so we stay in the habit of reading a graph properly. It's also fun to note that rows 1 through 5 will be repeated, but in reverse order for rows 7 through 11. The only row that is unique is row number 6, that's the very middle row. We left off the August sailboat pattern. I always like to put a safety pin in my working loop just to keep it from unraveling on me as I put it away for the month. So I'm going to take my safety pin out. I will use that again later. Back the hook in the loop. So here we go, ready to go. We begin every row with a chain two, or you could look at it like you chain two and turn at the end of every row. That chain two counts as the first double crochet of the new row. So we'll turn our blankets around. The first two rows of the pattern are pretty simple. Row one, if you're right-handed, you're over here. If you're left-handed, you're over here, is all color A. So 20 stitches on repeat of color A. It's just double crochet, color A all the way across. Chain two, turn, and row two is identical. Double crochet, color A in every single stitch all the way across. So you would read the graph right-handed, row one, and then row two. Or if you're left-handed, row one, and then row two. But there's no color change for the first two rows, so let's just 
get comfortable, work on our tension. We'll double crochet 120 stitches per row. That's six repeats of the 20 stitch graph. And I'll see you at the end of row two. We are at the end of row two already of our graph. So rows one and two are just straight double crochet in every single stitch using color A. So really nothing big going on there. We chain two, turn at the end of every row, remembering that the last double crochet of the row is always worked into the top of that chain two on the previous row because it counts as a double crochet. So chain two, turn our work. Blankets are getting nice and big here. Alright, let's take a look at our graph. Row 3 is the first row where we actually have some color changing. You do not need spools. Because this connects, it's probably easier to just pull your yarn, use one color held, sort of alternating between A and B throughout. Uh, you can still use spools if you want, but it's kind of nice to take a break from them <laughs> every couple of months. Right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. This is mirror image though, so it doesn't really matter what side you're looking at it from. The first two stitches are in color A. Then we switch to B for six, A for four, six for B, two for A repeat. And that's the same whether you're working this way or this way. Two A, six B, four A, six B, two A repeat. That first chain two counts as a double crochet. We are going to work a double crochet into the next stitch. So that's the first two stitches in A. And before we finish that second stitch, we are going to bring in our new color so we want that color B. We're going to put a slip knot here on our hook. Joining in color B. I'm going to weave in that tail later. That finishes off that stitch with the new color. And now it's six in B. Remember you are carrying color A. So since we are not using spools, you don't have to worry about dropping a spool and picking up another one further on. You're just going to alternate between A and B all the way across for rows three through nine. You'll always be carrying the color that you're not using until we get to the end of the row. The last time you use the color, so in this case, the last time you would use B in rows two, three, four, so, sorry, four, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine. You would drop B right after you use it for the last time in the row. And the only time that that changes is in, co in row six because it's a little bit different. But you can otherwise just kind of flip between them, carrying one and then the other. Once you've done the first six stitches in color B, don't finish off that last stitch just yet. You're going to make sure you tighten up on. A, just to make sure that it's not bulging out underneath. Finish off that last stitch with A. It's now four. Double crochet in A, you are carrying B. Tighten up on that B. Before you finish that last or fourth stitch in A, you're going to switch back to B. And now you're carrying A again. Six, double crochet using color B. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Before I switch back, I'm going to grab color A, finish the last stitch of B, and then it's two in A to finish the 20 stitch repeat of the graph before you start all over again with two in A. And I can just finish off that stitch. I'm not changing colors. And I am not dropping my yarn. Usually after I would finish with the B color in a spool, or in a first graph repeat, I would drop the spool color. But since I'm going to carry it along, I'm just going to keep carrying B if I'm not using it. 
or carrying A if I'm not using it. The last time you repeat your last set of six B towards the end, so just before the last two stitches where you're back in A, that's when you can drop the color and then you can pick it up again from that place in row four, but we'll get to that. Okay, that's it. That's all you're gonna repeat all the way across, 2A, 6B, 4A, 6B, 2A, repeat. I'll catch up with you at the end. B for six, four for A, B for six, four for A. I'm pretty sure you got into the swing of that as we got all the way across. The last six in B, you finish that last stitch with the A and now you can drop the B. You don't have to carry a color once it's finished for the row to the end of the row. So just drop B, finish the last two stitches in A and that is it for row three. Chain two. Turn your work. All right, here we are on the other side. Let's take a look at the graph. Row four, right-handed, you're over here. Lefties, you're over here. But like I said, it's mirror image, so it doesn't really matter what way you come at it. The chain two at the beginning of the row is our first stitch in A. We are immediately changing to B for two, four for A, B for two, A for two, B for two, A for four, B for two, A for one, and of course as you're repeating across, that's going to be two. It's gonna be two B, four A, two B, two A, repeat, two B, four A, two B, two A, repeat, 2B, 4A, 2B, 2A, so on and so on and so on, because we are making the bottom parts of the chains. Let's see what it looks like in play. So that first chain two is our double crochet in A. We are immediately switching to B. There's gonna be a little bit of a reach. Make sure you're covering or carrying A. You work that double crochet with B into the next stitch, and it's two for B to start, so you can just Work over top of your carries, making sure that you don't have any A or B carries showing. Two for B, so you don't quite finish that B second stitch. You switch back to A. Four double crochet in A. Switching back to B for two. Make sure I just tug on that B so it's not bulging out anywhere. It looks nice and neat and tidy. I'm carrying a B for two. And that's the bottom of the first chain link complete. I switch back to A. A for two. This is the sort of space in between chain links. I switch back to B, B for two, I switch back to A, A for four, I switch back to B, B for two, and then the full graph repeat finishes with back to A for one, and then you will start again, A for one, and then B for two. But it's easier just because we're kind of connecting these across to think B for two, A for four, B for two, A for two, B for two, A for four, B for two, A for two and on and on across, because this connecting chain link is 12 of these actual chains, and then they're all linked together across row six. So that is row four. If you wanna continue that all the way across, I'll catch up with you at the end. At the end of row four, start that last double crochet using B, 
drop B, switch back to A to finish it, and you can drop the B color. You can work your last double crochet of the row in A in the top of that chain too. No need to carry the B to the end, just drop it where the last place is you use it. That is row four. You've got the bottom of 12 of these little chain links happening. That's six full repeats of the pattern. Chain two with A, and we'll turn our blanket around. And let's grab that graph. Row five. Right-handed drew over here, left-handed drew over here. That first chain two counts as our first stitch, and then we are immediately into the color change. B for one, A for six, B for one, two A, one B, six A, one B, one A, repeat. One A, one B, six A, one B, two A, one B, six A, one B, one A, repeat. So there's our one and A, we're immediately switching to B. We're gonna have a bit of a carry. So remember, whenever you start a row, you're always sort of looking for a carry. If I look back here, I can see that my yarn kind of creeps around the side of my last stitch. So I'm just gonna get my hook underneath that carry. If I have to, I'll just pull it right over top of the hook before I pick up a loop. There we go. And I'm actually not going to complete this stitch because I need to switch back to A immediately. So back to A. And now it's six in A. And we're carrying B. And the beginning and the ends of your rows sometimes might be a little, eh, a little messy. They might feel a little strange, but don't worry too much about the edges of the blanket because we are going to be adding a border and that will neaten everything up. There's stitch number six in A. Work the first part of it. I like to tighten up that B. Switch to B and it's B for one. So you're only working the first part of that stitch and then you're already back to A and it's two in A. And now we're back to B for one. You only work part of it before you switch back to A again. And now it's A for six, working on the middle section of our chains. Work the first half of that sixth stitch with A. I'm gonna tighten up my B. Finish it with B. I've got one more to do in B before I finish the graph and start the repeat. I work first half of it, switch back to A, and I work the last stitch of the graph in A. 1A, 1B, 6A, 1B, 2A, 1B, 6A, 1B, 1A, repeat. That's all you're going to do across for row five, and I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. As we finish row five, you work your last stitch of B, finish it with A, and we work the last stitch of the row in A, but we are actually going to carry B right to the end of the row because we start row six with B. So let's double crochet with A into the top of the chain two that finishes the row. Before we finish our last stitch, we're actually going to switch back to B. So your B is gonna come up the edge of your blanket. You're gonna finish the last stitch of the row with A and you're gonna chain two with B because B is the first stitch of row six. Row six is unique, there's no other row like it, but we're gonna make sure that we carry A all the way back. So before I get ahead of myself, chain two with B, turn your blanket around.
not lose our stitch here. Okay, let's grab our graph. Row six, this is the oddball. The right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here, but it's mirror image, so either way you go, you're gonna get the same results. We start with three stitches in B. Switch to A for four, B for six, A for four, B for three, repeat. 3B, 4A, 6B, 4A, 3B, repeat. That first chain two counts as a double crochet. Make sure you sort of pick up your A to carry it. You're gonna work a double crochet using B over the next two stitches. And of course, stitch number three marks the color change. So we switch to A. A for four, carrying B. Tug on B, switch back to B. B for six. That's the sixth stitch. We're going to switch back to A. Four A. Switch back to B. To finish the graph, it's three B. And then we start the graph all over again with 3B. So 3B, 3B, 4A, 6B, 4A, 3B, repeat. Or you could look at it like this. 4A, 6B, 4A, 6B, 4A, 6B, 4A, 6B, all the way across ending with 3 in B. This is the big link up. So all of our chain links are connected now through row six. And I'll let you work away at that, and I'll catch up with you at the end of the row. We're nearing the end of row six, so we work our last double crochet using color A, finish it with B, and like the row before, we're actually going to carry row or color A to the very end of the row as we work our last three double crochet stitches in B. And that's because we need to begin row seven with A. So we want A right there and ready for us to go. So last double crochet is worked into the top of the chain two from the previous row. We carried A all the way to the end. And because we're beginning the row with A, we're gonna finish that last double crochet that we made with B by switching back to A. And now you can chain two, that's your A color, and turn your work. We're going to begin row seven with A. So that chain two counts as a double crochet. Let's take a look at our graph. We are now going backwards. So seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven are exact repeats of rows five, four, three, two, and one. So we're working those first five rows identically but in reverse now. So row seven is a repeat of row five. That chain two, right handed you're over here, left is you're over here. Chain two and A counts as your first double crochet. We immediately switch to B for one, and then A for six, B for one, A for two, B for one, A for six, B for one, A for one, repeat. Or you can look at it like one and B, six and A, one and B, two and A, repeat. One and B, six and A, one and B, two and A, repeat. So it's just like row five that First double crochet or the chain two counts as your double crochet. You're immediately switching to B. You've got a little carry, so always be looking for that opportunity to just grab the little carry. Just so you. And because we're only working one in A, we're immediately switching back. Or I should say we're working one in B, we're immediately switching back to A. 
So you can finish that second stitch with A. You've got A, B, and then you're back to A for six, and then B for one, A for two, B for one, A for six, B for one, A for two, repeat. So just like row five. And I'll see you at the end of row seven. We're nearing the end of row seven. You're going to work your last stitch in B. You can now drop B, so we're finished carrying any colors to the very end of the row. We don't have to do that anymore. So once you're finished your last color change of the row, you can drop that color, work one last stitch of A into the top of the chain two that began the previous row. That is the end of row seven. Chain two with A, we'll turn our work. And let's take a look at the graph. We are into row eight. Right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. Row eight is a repeat of row four. So it's one and A, and our chain two counts as the A stitch. Two B, four A, two B, two A, two B, four A, two B, one A, repeat. So one A, two B, four A, two B, two A. 2B, 4A, 2B, 1A, repeat. It is exactly the same as row four. So because we're doing sort of replica rows, you can look down so you know this is your row six. It's the row that begins and ends with the B. This would have been row five. This is row four. So you want all of your stitches to look exactly and line up exactly as the stitches in your row four. So if you get lost, you can always look below or you can double check the graph and I'll let you work away at row eight. Remember that there's a little bit of a reach right at the beginning, so you wanna make sure that you are getting underneath that little reach so that you don't accidentally make yourself a pulled or a, a color of, of yarn that sort of just hangs out. You don't want that, you wanna get rid of that reach. 2B. And then into the color change, back to A, 4 and A, 2B, repeat over and over and over. We are closing in the tops of our chains now. Back to B for two. Two A, got those two A in between your chain links, back to B, and you're basically repeating that. So you are filling in the top of your chain link. Row eight is exactly the same as row four. Just finishing row eight. So I've worked the last or the first half of my last double crochet using B. I'm finishing with A, dropping B, and the last stitch of the row is a double crochet in A in the top of that chain two from the previous row. That is row eight complete. We've got one more row of color change now. Chain two with A. We're going to turn our work. All right, let's take a look at the graph. Row nine. Right-handed, you're over here. Left-handed, you're over here. Row nine is an exact repeat of row three, so our first color change row. We start 2A, we move to B for six, A for four, B for six, two for A, repeat. 2A, 6B, 4A, 6B, 2A, repeat. That first chain two counts as a double crochet. We work the next one, we're going to grab our green yarn, make sure that we're carrying it so it's right where we need to be when we start with it in the next stitch. So switch to B. Now we work B for six, 
And remember, if you're kind of lost, take a look at the chart or look all the way down at that first row of color change, row B. All of your B stitches should align with all of your B stitches in your first color change row. So this is row three down here. All of your row nine stitches should align with your row three stitches because it's the exact same row. So A for four, and then back to B for six. And then you can look at it like A for four, B for six, A for four, B for six, A for four, B for six, repeat. And if you get lost, look at the chart up here or just look down below to make sure all of your white stitches or your A stitches line up and your B stitches line up. And that's probably the easiest way to know that you are on track. And I'll see you at the end of row nine. We're at the end of row nine. I'm just finishing my sixth stitch, my last stitch in B, switching back to A. The last two stitches in the row are A, and that is it for our B. So I'm going to join my last double crochet in the top of the chain two there. That's it for B. You can snip that yarn if you like. You are no longer going to need it for changing colors. Chain two, turn. We've got two more rows left to do now, and it's just a straight double crochet with A. So we've just finished row nine. We're gonna chain two, turn for row 10, double crochet in every stitch across in A. Chain two, turn for row 11, double crochet in every stitch across with A. So it's two full rows of A, just like the first two rows that mirror it below. So go ahead, double crochet in every single stitch across. I will see you at the end of row 11, and that will be September complete. I have finished the 11th row of the graph, so that was after row 9, you just had two rows of just straight double crochet in A, and that is our chain link pattern all done. I am going to pull up on my loop, get my little safety pin, put that back in place so that it doesn't unravel on me. There we go, and I'm all set for next month. I'm going to weave in my little tail and uh, wrap it up and put it in its spot all ready for October. That's really nifty. I love these connecting patterns. I love all the imagery that we've done so far this year, but these tessellating connecting patterns are really cool, and they really connect us back to that traditional fair isle style of knitting, or that graph design. Anyway, we really hope you enjoyed making the September graph along with us this month. We will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have a great week. Bye, everybody! Hi, everybody! Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe!